morning, my friends. I'm Pastor Ben Hayes from First Baptist Church, Dateville, Alabama, bringing you our thought for the day right after I've just finished attending a Fellowship of Christian Athletes huddle at the Dadeville High School. What a blessing. 32 students came out, heard the gospel, and uh, we're excited about what God's going to do on our campuses this year through FCA. Uh, right now, don't forget, we got 10 o'clock men's Bible study, ladies gather for prayer meeting, then uh, this evening, 445 supper, 5 um, 45, our prayer meeting and Bible study. We're starting the book of Romans tonight. Uh, handbell practice at that time, 645, choir practice. So big day. Come and join us for all of that. But right now we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and we're talking about paying the preacher. Now, I know that's a, t a, a, a touchy subject, but Paul says, listen, you know, the even back in the Old Testament, they took care of the priest. Uh, God told the people, don't muzzle the ox when he's treading the corn. Let him partake of the harvest of uh, what's, what's going on there. And, and Paul says at the end, he says in verse 11, if we have sown spiritual things for you, is it a great thing if we reap your material things? In other words, pay the preacher. If others are partakers of this right over you, are we not even more? Talking about other apostles that had come, maybe other preachers. Or as I said yesterday, a lot of uh, teachers in Corinth who had just set up shop and people would pay them to, to teach. All right, but look at what he says at the end of verse 12. <clears throat> he says, Nevertheless, we have not used this right, but endure all things lest we hinder the gospel of Christ. Now he's going back to that old uh, that, that, that old thing we talked about in chapter 8 where he's talking about if, I, if what I'm doing is causing someone to stumble, I'm going to stop doing it. He said, if I eat meat and that causes someone to, to sin, I'm going to stop eating meat. Well, that's what he's saying here. If my receiving a salary is causing someone to uh, not receive Christ as, as their Savior, to be offended by that, he says, I'm not going to do that. And that's why he was a tent maker. Most places where he went, he set up shop. He began making tents in the daytime, teaching at night, and that's how he supported himself. And there are a lot of bivocational, co-vocational pastors that I talked about yesterday who do the same thing because that's what God has called them to do. Uh, my calling has been to be a full-time pastor, and I'm so blessed here at First Baptist Dadeville. Uh, God is doing amazing things here because I give all of my time and effort to the ministry of this church and this community, and that's what we, we, we are called to do. Some are called to, to do the, the other, to support themselves. But Paul says, understand, it's absolutely okay. The pastor should be paid for his services. The minister should be paid for proclaiming the gospel to the world, to the community. They have to survive too. And that's why God set up the temple service like he did, where the priest who would have to stay at the temple uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that uh, the, the food would be brought in and all of the things that they would need to survive would uh, be used to take care of them. But look at what he says in verse 13. Do you not know that those who minister the holy things eat of the things of the temple and those who serve at the altar partake of the offerings of the altar even so, the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should live from the gospel. Exactly what I've been saying. That's what God, the way God set it up all the way back in the Old Testament to take care of those who are doing the work of the ministry. Now, does that mean that, that ministers should be flying around in, in private jets and, and driving uh, the, the fanciest of, of, of sports cars? Absolutely not. Uh, I think that that is a travesty before God, but I do think that they ought to be taken care of so that they can live in the, the standard of the community and they could, could have decent cars to drive and, and their families are taken care of and they should be able to send their kids to college and they ought to have a retirement account. They ought to have health insurance. All of those things that, uh, that the, the, the majority of the community have, that's what the pastor should have. He should be able to live that way. And uh, that's important so that they can continue to do the work of the ministry. And, and Paul, again, look at verse 15. We're going to finish up with this. He says, but I have used none of these things, nor have I written these things that it should be done so to me. Let me say at this point, uh, Paul says, I'm not taking salary from you. And uh, he says, I'm not writing this so that you'll think that you owe me a salary. But here's the thing. I want you to understand, I'm not sharing these things because I'm not being paid well. I am. God is taking care of me through the people at First Baptist Church. And it's difficult for pastors to talk about this to their own churches. So I'm talking to those of you who don't go to First Baptist Church, they will take care of your preachers. They need it. And he says, for it would be better for me to die than that anyone should make my boasting void. For if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of. 
for necessity is laid upon me. Yes, woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. He's going to preach the gospel regardless. So will your pastor. But wouldn't it be nice just to bless him, just to encourage him, just to take care of his financial needs? Think about that this morning. Be blessed, and I'll see you back here tomorrow.